You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Before you get the rest of the story, I'd love to share a quick message from today's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Follow Up Boss, one of the leading CRMs, client relationship managers for residential real real estate, tons of top producing agents, and some of the fastest growing teams out there are using follow-up balls to increase lead conversion, eliminate busy work that you're not doing anyway, and frankly, deliver a higher class experience in real estate to everybody who chooses you as their realtor of choice. So if you're going to keep listening to this, which I know you will, there's more information and a personal review of follow-up balls. For more information, go to followupboss.com slash crazy. Hello, friends. Lee Brown here, and this is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today I'm introducing you to a wildly seasoned investor who's also an instructional designer, who's also working on how she can help other people in the world create generational wealth and even bridge that gap that we see in the African-American community. Tanya Weathers has a thousand different things to say. You're going to love her as much as I do. So enjoy this conversation and I'll see you on the other side. So you're going to get to start now by telling our audience a little tiny bit about you, where you're located, what you do in and around real estate, and give them a little bit of insight so we can kick off our conversation. Absolutely. So I am currently in the Dallas, Texas area by way of Florida, kind of raised all of my life in Florida, but I've been here in Dallas for roughly about four or five years now. I love this city. Absolutely love it. And one of the main reasons I moved here to Dallas was because of the real estate market here. I mean, it just has its own little, you know, its own little way about itself. It doesn't matter what the entire country is doing. Dallas is always special. So I moved here because the growth is amazing. You know, all the industry that's moving here, the way that property appreciates. I was like, yeah, Dallas is definitely a place I'm going to take off a lot of my real estate. And so that's what I did. I mean, I've been in real estate for now the past eight years, and I always was in the investing side of things. I know a lot of folks' journey, they usually start as an agent or in some capacity like that. But I was like, no, I'm going to dive right in and I'm getting into investing. Yes. And so when it comes to just any type of investing that meets my goal. I'm always about not trying to meet the goal of the masses. It's about my goal. And so I originally started off in Airbnbs. And then from there, I learned a lot about rental properties, moved on to multifamily, diving into mortgage notes, doing a lot of private lending research now. So I'm all over the place when it comes to investing, but it's mainly because I have different goals. And so that's kind of how I got into it. And I'm loving it now. And now I'm just trying to people, especially within the African American community, about how to break generational curses using real estate. You're building an empire, right? And people think empire is the top 1% and it's not. It's the empire for you and your kids and your mama and whoever in your space says, oh, If Tanya can do it, I can do it because that's the thing about real estate investing. And I love that you dove into how your goals are completely Tanya's goals and not what somebody else does, which is why you're probably just this much as crazy as I am when you see the infomercials and people say, you have to do it this way. You have to do this or on Clubhouse, which I enjoy. There are some people that will, they will go to their grave declaring that their way is the only way and their goals are the only goals, but that's not it. And it often just starts with that first person who says, I really just want my own house because that's where all of this starts for so many people. But then they watch HGTV and they're like, Well, I could do some investment properties too, but not everybody on HGTV looks like a Tanya Weathers. And in fact, we kind of need an HGTV program where somebody says, I'm going to do these kinds of investments. Well, then I want to learn about these kinds of investments. Well, now I'd like to go here and do this and showcase 
all the pathways, because if you want to solve the gap that exists between African-American home ownership and the average American home ownership, I think personally, it's about showing all the pathways so that somebody could say, well, not that path, but maybe this one, or maybe this one. So we give more breadth because I just don't think we talk about the breadth enough, Tanya, do you? I do not. And I totally agree with you that it just doesn't look the same for everyone. And you're absolutely right. You'll hear folks say, no, this is the exact way. It's wholesaling or it's like fixing and flipping. And it's like, wait a minute, not everyone can do that. You know, I always say your time and energy is really going to determine what type of <laughs> investing it's you limited. want to do. You, you just don't have all the time in the world to do everything. And everybody doesn't have the stomach for it. I don't have the stomach for wholesaling. I've seen some of those properties. I can't do it. And I'm grateful to the people who can because they are providing solutions, but that's not my wheelhouse. I need far more boring things than wholesaling. But then I talked to one of my first time buyers, she's under contract on her first house. And in our first meeting, we talked about, should your first house be a single family house? Should it be a townhouse? Should it be a duplex where you live in one side and rent the other? Should it be a triplex where you live in one and rent two or a quad where you live in one and rent three? And she's almost 30. She's a PhD candidate. She's an African-American woman. And she's like, this is so much more than she expected to talk about because I think too often as real estate professionals, we forget that somebody's investment structure could start in the primary space too, because if their dream is like yours of how do I build and do something different, there's so many different ways to accomplish it, which is why we love real estate and it's why you love Texas too, because everything exists in the Dallas market. You could try all those different kinds of real estate. Exactly. All of it. And yeah. by the way, where in the Metroplex do you live? Because I used to live in Grapevine like a thousand years ago. I'm actually an uptown. Oh, you're a fancy person. Okay. So then there's an investor you need to make friends with. And she's a realtor, Kristen Smith. Do you know Kristen? No, I don't. So her mother, Leslie Ruda Smith, is actually the president of the National Association of Realtors in 2022. And her daughter and her wife, they live in that downtown Dallas, that little bubbly area where you live. Mm -hmm. She's all about investor strategies and she's smart as a whip. You'll love her. She also has access to lots of good restaurants. And so you could totally go out to eat. And I don't know about you, but I love to meet anybody if we can eat while we're talking. So yes. let's go back to your investor journey and you've changed pathways a lot. So what's your favorite kind of investing? If I'd said, Tanya, here's a pile of cash. And there's an opportunity in all these spaces. Which one would you land on? What would you pick? I would definitely pick fix and flips, buy and holds. Those okay. are my two. And the reason is, is because I have a very big creative side to me. Tell so me I love that. the design. Yeah, I love to be able to design and lay out a beautiful home. I'm in the middle of a fix right now. And it just, I get a little tingly feeling every time I can look at tile and then understand how I want to structure the property. I think I get that from my mother. She was a big interior designer and decorator. I think she changed like twice a season. Our house looked different. And so <laughs> I got it from her and then it just transferred over to me. And so I would definitely say fix and flips. So, you know, there's an actual data point that says only 15% of the U.S. public has the ability to visualize, which is what you're just describing there, which could also be why so many people think they want to be in that space. And then they get in and they're like, ah, ah, and they get trapped. It's overwhelmed. Yeah, you can't see beyond the linoleum that's in there or the fungal growth that's coming up through the walls. But when you are that rare, tiny, tiny slice of the public that can see what it could be, that's a rare gift. So my question is, do you bring people along with you on that journey? Can they see what you see? Or are you just a driving personality that says, y'all going to do this and this and this and do it right and report back? My original career is as an instructional designer, and it's a fancy way of saying that I can create a training program and I can break down anything to make it 
understandable by the most simplest in the most simplest terms, right? And so I like to bring people along my journey. I like to get them in my head to say, to understand fully why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I'm buying this type of paint, why am I buying these types of floors for durability purposes or time management purposes or what have you. And I really enjoy that part of it because I could just make orders and boss people around, but I really like bringing along the journey because I love educating. I love educating. So so that's probably what we need the most in this space because until somebody has somebody else that will pour into them, they can lose a lot of money doing whether it's buy and hold or fix and flip or multifamily, you could lose money in real estate as easily as you can make money. So I'm curious if you ever have in your real estate investment career, was there ever a property you bought and you're like, I don't care if I lose money, this thing has got to go. I can't do this again. What was the biggest expensive learning lesson you've had in the business? So my first property that I bought in Dallas, it was actually a house hacking situation. So I just moved to Dallas and I was like, I'm going to house hack this thing. And I didn't crack my numbers the way that I should have. I really didn't. I um, did really great with finding a realtor that understood what I was looking for as far as the structure of the house hacking, right? So I didn't get to do a traditional like duplex. I did one of those, they call it different things all over the country, but mother-in-law suites essentially where you know you have the property in the back. And um I did really great with finding that. I did really great with finding a sweet spot for my rental that matched with the market, right? But what I didn't take into consideration is purchasing an older home and the costs that are associated with that. And because the home I purchased was built in the 30s and it was actually a turnkey when I purchased it, but I didn't really understand what that meant. A turnkey for a property that's 2021 versus a turnkey or property that's 1930 built, two different turnkeys, right? And so after only a year, everything started breaking apart, even though I got a pretty good inspection done, right? But everything started breaking apart. And I just didn't have enough reserves to make it so that I could cash flow at the end of every month. And so at some point I was like, I'm just ready to get rid of this thing. I don't care if I make money off of it. I'm just ready to get rid of it. And I think if I had to do it all over again, I would definitely understand the differences between the the years built, right? What can I expect if a home is built in 1930s versus 1960 versus 2000? What can I expect? And I actually, as I make my mistakes, I like to create resources for myself, like literal guides. Like, okay, this is what I learned from this mistake. And so I can pass it on to others. So that was the biggest thing that I made. Fortunately, though, I did make a really great profit from that after I sold it. It was a 100K day for me after holding that property for three and a half years. The Dallas market is fantastic. So it was a 100K day for me once I sold it. But as I was going through it, it was a lot of ups and downs through that, not really understanding the price associated with that. Okay. So I told y'all that I would do a review of Follow Up Boss, you know, because I'm your friend in real estate. And I did. Now, you know, there's a blue million CRM out there. I mean, if you go to any Facebook group, every realtor's like, which one should I use? Which one should I use? And you know that these CRM, which are client relationship managers or customer relationship manager, whatever you want to call it, It's truly a system that's just designed to help you know what to do next because you're very busy and you're a multitasker in real estate with all those different tasks and balls up in the air. You need something to help you stay on track. And that's what Follow Up Boss does. Now, when you save a name and a phone number in there, that is basically a Rolodex. Follow Up Boss is going to take the names and phone numbers and also help you know what to do next. So you can maintain these relationships with your neighbors because that's what this is about. Real estate is not about serving just prospects and clients. It's about taking great care of your neighbor's needs in real estate. And if you'll use a tool like follow-up boss where they remember you, oh, they might even call you when they're ready to buy or sell again, or when their mom and daddy do, or their best friend or their kid, and you want to be top of mind, that's what a product like follow-up boss will do for you. 
Truly, it's going to change your business when you start paying better attention to people. They don't have to know you use Follow Up Boss, but they'll totally understand that they are being heard by you. So now there's a free trial for my people because you're loved. Go to followupboss.com slash crazy. No credit card is required. And frankly, because you're my people and we made an ask for you, Follow Up Boss said, yes, you get double the free trial. That's actually enough time to log in, put some pieces in it and watch it change your business as it has for so many realtors and teams nationwide. Again, go to followupboss.com slash crazy to start your free trial today. I love that you point that out because that 1930 house, I bet you $5 you walked in and you're like, I love this so much because they have the charm and the character and they suck us into the story and the history of the house. But then you got to think about environmental overlays. And if you're watching or listening when you're at a 1930 house, you're talking lead-based paint, asbestos, an oil tank. You probably got some lead pipes, some knob and tube wire, and you got things all over the place that might look fine, be operating fine. But as Tanya says, you don't know when they're going to just be done. And then when one thing goes, it's connected to 12 things. So there are, <laughs> so you do the same body language. I do like, it's all the things. And you can make those trade-offs, but it's exactly what she just said. It's got to be accounted for in the numbers, which is the mark of a true investor. You start breaking everything down into manageable bits. And for the record, those of y'all that aren't super familiar with the term house hacking, or you've heard it bandied around on Clubhouse and such, that basically means you have a four-bedroom house and you got two buddies in there to rent a bedroom and you put a lock on their door and Shazam, they're your tenants living in the house with you. It's a wonderful way for your college age person or your young person to really get started in real estate. And I think we've got to talk about that more because of the housing shortage that's out there. There's a shortage of rentals, especially affordable ones, and that can be an affordable thing to do. But if you're a mom, just spoiler alert, you should totally run background checks on these people that are moving into the house with your baby boy because they could be totally sketch. I run credit checks, sex offender checks, and background checks before I let somebody move into a room. Just, you know, you can't guarantee that you keep the trouble out, but you could be smart about it without even violating fair housing. And not talking about fair housing, we're talking about criminal records, which is a whole different thing. And they start protecting those. A lot of landlords going to be in trouble. But anyway, so let's talk about the... Oh my gosh, you said something else that I jumped off on. Oh, your numbers, as you've been fine tuning your numbers. I love the way, I hope all of our investors or our burgeoning investors that are with this episode are thinking, oh, she learns as she goes, because that's where you get real wisdom, y'all. It's where you continue to pick up knowledge and add to your informational sheet and make those adjustments over time because nobody knows everything out of the gate. And I'm curious now that you are a highly seasoned person in the investor world, plus educational instructional designer, which um, totally, if you still worked in that field, I would go be recommending you to a place that's looking to hire one right now. But I guess I have to give you a name anyway. But when you're rebuilding this information, what are the top three numbers you think any investor should be focused on if they want to get a good basis for whether this is something to do more due diligence on? Give me the top three numbers and why they matter. Because obviously, when we say things like cash flow, that means different things to different people. So I'm curious as to how you calculate that. Yeah. And that was actually what I was going to first say is definitely the cash flow. And cash flow is totally different for everyone. You know, a lot of the people that I've actually followed and have mentored me, the target number was oh, if you cash flow $200, $300 a month, then you're doing great. And that doesn't work for everyone. It doesn't work for me, I'll be honest with you. And so I think it's really important, kind of what I started from the beginning saying, you need to understand your financial goals because it's not the same for everyone. For some people, $200, $300 a month is just not enough. It just really isn't. And so some folks are wanting to cash flow 1,000 a month. So that's going to determine your strategy. It's like, maybe you need to go multifamily versus single family if that's what you're looking for. So I think your cash flow numbers is the biggest one, the top one, I would say. And then depending on your strategy, if you're looking to fix and flip versus you know buy and hold, I think that also really matters too when it comes to rehabbing. So your rehab costs is also a really big one and your price per door. Obviously, this might not be apparent to everyone, but 
a fix and flip rehab is going to be totally different than a buy and hold rehab when you're getting renters in there, right? Because we don't want to put all the bells and whistles into a property that you're going to have tenants in that's going to destroy it anyway, right? And so also understanding that rehab costs and then your reserves. I think that's the biggest thing. I did not calculate my reserves as well <laughs> with that property, that 1930s property. I should have probably added an extra three, four hundred dollars a month onto that to really cover what I needed to. But that was a lesson learned, right? So those would be my top three numbers that I pay attention to. And I would recommend that any newbie pay attention to as well. I got to give her an extra shout out on reserves, y'all. I mean, seriously, too many investors are roaming around out there saying, I have some down payment money. I just need it to break even or slightly cash flow. And if you don't have a liquid bucket of cash sitting over here in your just in case area, you are going to wind up in hot water because something could happen. Oh, let's call it COVID, where you had a moratorium on evictions and you had tenants not paying in some markets. You couldn't evict. They couldn't pay a landlord that did not have reserves and maybe was in a municipality that wasn't working with the government funding. Man, you could have been in a world of hurt. And also it's with your property because I don't know about you, Tanya, but every property I have, about the minute something goes right in it, the dishwasher goes and so does the water heater. Dishwashers and water heaters are very, very persnickety and they're several hundred bucks and you got to take care of it because a good housing provider takes great care of your tenants because that means your tenants will take better care of you when your properties are better. So please keep your reserves. And by the way, if your realtor asks you about reserves, don't be getting all coy about it, thinking it's none of our business because the reason we ask that question is so that you can do what you want to do with this property, whether it's flip it back out and let somebody buy a fixed up house or it's to keep it as an investment property in the future. By the way, Tanya mentioned per door. If you're not somebody invest in multifamily, that's a common vocabulary lesson. If you're buying a fourplex, that's four doors. And the way that we're calculating that is each door should be generating its own income. And I will tell you, I wish I'd gotten into multifamily earlier in my investor life, but I was buying single family because I'm a residential realtor. So I bought what I knew. And if I knew anything, I'd go back in time and buy more multifamily in some more markets. So when you're looking at a market like a Dallas or any of the big metro markets, how far out do you think the opportunities lie in a new work from home slash come into the office sometimes slash COVID has changed our working lives. Do you see your clients doing more rental properties and more investments? Are you yourself buying things further out from town now? Do you see there's increased opportunity there? Absolutely. Yeah, especially in those suburbs outside of Dallas. I also tend to invest in Tampa as well. And so there's a lot of various different growth opportunities and investment opportunities outside of the Tampa area. And those are actually my favorite areas because they're growing, the population is being pushed out there. So they're going to need places to stay. I mean, every time I come, go back home to Tampa, a new apartment complex is being built or rehab for the huge population that's growing there. And so absolutely. And I think for me, there's better opportunity for cash flow. And it's better opportunity to hold these property and appreciate over the years. And yeah, I think, and Dallas, even though I do love that city, it is becoming so expensive. And so you're kind of being forced. You have no other choice but to have to go out into these different cities. But yeah, I love it. Okay, so before we wrap up our episode here, let's go back to one of your personal goals in life, which is to help other African-American people become empire builders in their own right. What would you say are the keys to the profession on the whole? What should realtors be doing? What should we as neighbors do to help get people to open their eyes to what you've done to take Tanya's method and run with it? Is it to take a course from you? Are there great ways to handle it? What are your thoughts on the whole rebuilding and bridging that gap? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I would say is understand the issue. I think it's really, really first to understand the issue before you dive into it. Because 
if you don't understand why it is important for the African American community to build wealth, it might be difficult for you to help them do that, right? So I think understanding the issues, just the fact that building wealth can help fight injustices, help fight medical conditions, because now they have the ability to go get surgeries and get the medication and eat healthier and so on and so forth, give our children better education. And when one group of people is doing great, it helps everyone, right? And so first understanding that issue and why it's important, but then, yes, absolutely, I am here to mentor. I think that having someone that looks like you is really, really important to have, especially in the African-American community. We don't have very many role models out there. And so sometimes it is a little bit more comfortable to learn and experience from someone that looks like you. So I do have an academy, Breaking Curses Real Estate Investing Academy. If you are at all interested, you can visit and apply. It's TanyaWeathers.com. I would love to meet you there, hear a little bit about your journey and what it is that you're trying to do for you and your family. But if it's not me, get with someone, get someone to teach you, to train you, to learn from, because it's really important for us as a whole, as a people, just to move up and start doing a little bit better than what we've done before and what the generation before us has done. So that's what I'd say. I love that. And you got to remember, guys, when you're thinking about this stuff, we're not just talking about money. And I love that you jumped into the two spaces that there's data for days and white papers and policy papers. People that are in houses that they own have better health care outcomes. Their kids have better educational outcomes. And both of those things change families forever, because if you're healthier, you're able to engage better. You can work longer. You can be more active in your community. When kids do better in school, obviously their futures get broadened. I mean, it's so much more than just where you lay your head down. There's all these different pieces. And when we look at the market that we're in right now, we're in November of 2021 and the real estate markets continue to be really hot, which means a lot of people are feeling pushed away from the markets. Look, let Tanya and I remind you that when inflation continues to kick up, your rents will continue to kick up. But when you own a house, when you're getting in that 30 year fixed mortgage at first property, man, at least your house payment is stable so you can stay put longer and increase your healthcare outcomes and your educational outcomes and you build equity over time. So there's all these different pieces at play. The biggest thing is that home ownership for every neighbor and every zip code is the key to stability in the future. Now, ideally, she and I'll both tell you we want everybody to think about building up an empire of some rental properties or some commercial strip malls or whatever floats your boat in investment real estate, but it starts with the primary residence so that you can have financial stability that doesn't rely on anybody but you, because there's a huge change in your life when the results of your hard work and you come home and it's your house and it's not a landlord's house. And we're grateful for landlords, but daggone, your house feels different. So Tanya, I love what you're doing out there to be a resource and be a face and be somebody that pours out. And guys, all of her links are in the show notes for this episode. So if you're thinking, but Lee, you're rambling. I didn't write down her website. Quit stressing out. Everything's over there. So you can take it, run with it, share it. And maybe you have a colleague in your real estate office that wants to learn, we'll hook them up with Tanya. Maybe there's a neighbor at your church that you've tried to talk to about real estate and you're not able to connect, introduce them to Tanya. Because the cool thing about real estate is there's something for everybody if we let everybody know there's something for them. All right, Tanya. Totally agree. You got any parting words for us here? Because we were able to go in like a thousand different directions in our little episode here, which I always my favorite ones. Yes, we did. I think just the parting words is share the love right? Share the love of education, train your neighbor, give some little jewels out there that you might not be able to see the result of it today. But a lot of times things hold with people. And you'll never know, you might see them in a year from now. And they're like, you know what, because of you, I'm in real estate today. So share the love, share the education, share the knowledge. That would be my last little 
jewel that I have to drop. And then y'all can go get the rest of her jewels on her website and connect with her to be your resource. Tanya, thank you so much for coming on the show. I look forward to connecting with you in person at some point. And thank you for what you're doing to help neighbors see their way into this space because it changes lives. And I'm grateful to you for that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, guys, leave her some love in the comments. Leave me five stars. Share this episode with somebody that needs to hear it and see it. And make sure you come back for more next time because we'll be back with more crazy shit in real estate. Okay, now don't forget to go try follow-up boss so that your business can continue to expand in professionalism and then you can meet some more crazy people yourself. I really appreciate follow-up boss sponsoring this episode, but mainly I appreciate them for giving y'all double the free trial time with no credit card required. So make sure you go to followupboss.com slash crazy and then let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you are a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one up the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 